Gifted was a thing that I was really geared up to do coming out of college. Because actually, um, again, I'll try and be succinct. When I was in high school, I had an, an older friend. He was maybe like two years above me. And he's not an artist at all, but he is a writer. And he started doing these like really crude comics that he would post like on bulletin boards in the school. And you know, they'd be like really just kind of dumb stick figure drawings, but you know, it got him his writing fix. And since he was graduating before I was, he was like, Why don't you take the comic over and, and run with it? And I'll give you something to do. So I did and you know, entirely made it my own and eventually it kind of became gifted. It was, I mean essentially it started off as kind of like a penny arcade rip off. It was like me and my best friend joking about video games and stuff like that. But anyway, I'd been doing it for so long, you know, like two years of, by the time I graduated, that I kind of started to like see the potential in it for being like a comic book series. So by the end of university, I was like, I think it's time to really start working on it. Did proper, and I actually started working on it the the final quarter of university, and. Um, actually produced a full 110 page graphic novel in 2010 after I graduated. It's supposed to be about like me and my friends vaguely. I mean, like the main character is named Yale because not to be pompous, but Yale's a pretty good name. Like, if, if, I, if, if the character becomes popular and someone's like, oh, that's like that comic with Yale in it, you're not going to have people like, Yale who? You know, I mean, to me it's like Canada. Or like you say Canada, like people know who you're talking about or Tetsuo or something. Grant, those are Japanese names, but, um, but yeah, so there was this party that my friends and I attended our second to last year of, of high school, and it was kind of about as Hollywood as it gets, so I was like, well, this seems like a good way to kick off the series, because, you know, it's fun, it's kind of rambunctious, and it it's a good way to get all the characters together for one big thing and because it's a party you kind of get to see how each of their personalities works or whatever so so the great party like what little of it I've done because right now it's just the 32 page first issue or whatever yeah it's basically just me and my buddy showing up to a party you know some people meet girls some people get a little have a little too much to drink you know and just shenanigans so it's nothing like yeah it's it's not the usurper to mouse or, or by any means or something but you know it's something that i think people would enjoy for just kind of like a fun quick read but the the further i take it the more substance that it has. um not that i'm aware of I, like i don't really have anything cooking right now i mean it's one of those things where i'm, I'm in an incredibly fortunate position where i can kind of like, but essentially let them come to me. Um, I mean, I'm not like Scrooge McDuckin' it in piles of cash, but you know, like I'm making a comfortable living hitting the convention circuits and like doing commission work and stuff. Um, and I would certainly love to work for some of them, but at the same time, getting work in comics can be a hassle. And it's like, honestly, I don't really feel like jumping through all those hoops of like trying to get my stuff in front of editors and stuff. Like, if they want me, they know where to find me. Like, because I, first of all, I personally know a bunch of editors at both DC and Marvel. I don't know too many at Dark Horse or anything like that. But, uh, you know, if they want to work with me, I kind of feel like I know that they'll call me. So it's like, it's also kind of like, why bother them? You know, it's like, because, again, if they wanted me, they'd be talking to me. So if they're not talking to me, then maybe I should just, you know, leave them be. And also not attract any unnecessary attention to the to the strip. Perks of I guess being an internationally popular webcomic was I basically like put out the SOS so I needed some help. And also just being in the comics industry, I have friends who have friends over there. And my, my good friend Shy, she works for Dark Horse, she works with some Greek artist and he was willing to translate the stuff for me. Um, because I thought that was cool that Diana and her mom, like in kind of private moments, would speak. I mean, when I hang out with like my Latin friends, they generally speak, you know, Spanish to their parents. I mean, in, under the certain circumstances. 
So I thought it was like a nice nod to her heritage. Because to me it's really important that Diana's Greek, which is why she's like a darker skin tone and has like the nose that she has, which mo thankfully most people love. Some people can't stand it, and to them I'm just kind of like, well, it sucks to be you. Um, <laughs> but I think Diana's cute as a button. Um, kind of too my own there, I guess. But uh, no, it's, it's like such a huge part of her character. And again, kind of going back to like the whitewashing thing, I don't understand why you would even want Diana to not seem Greek. So, like, to me it was really important to make sure that that was authentic and not just like a, kind of like, hey, I'm trying, but not too hard yeah. type thing. So, so no, it, it is actual Greek. And actually, I thought it was even better to not translate it. Because um, honestly, they're talking to each other. Like, you don't not really hear, like, the JLA kids don't know what the heck they're saying. So, I mean, there were Greek readers who ended up translating it for everybody, but to me it wasn't really important. Like, all you needed to know was, like, they're saying something intimate to each other. Most of it's just kind of, like, memory and kind of just instinct, really. Because, um, yeah, I don't really, like, I've never read JLI or anything like that, but, like, I know of it, and I... Just kind of like being a part of the culture, you kind of, through osmosis, know things. Um, but yeah, like if, if, if I was going to get really involved, like I, I probably did some research in regards to Diana's birthday party for like Amazons and stuff, because also I was, you know, I, I had an idea for like what Diana's mom is like, but I wasn't sure, and you know, things like that. So I kind of researched that a little bit. But generally speaking, it's just all off the top. I'd say on average it's close to like 8 to 10 hours, but sometimes they'll go really quick, other times it's like, it takes like 2 or 3 days to get it all knocked out, but, yeah, well, I mean, all you need to know is ask my friend Trad how long it takes him to get pages done, because no one works slower than him. It, sh it shows, but no one works slower than that guy. Scripting, which is pretty, I use that term pretty loosely, it's basically just jotting down the dialogue that I just because I want to know exactly what the characters are saying. Yeah. Um, I'll thumb it out, I'll pencil and ink the panel borders first, and then yeah, like super rough pencils, you know, just kind of like blocking stuff in, then actually penciling it, doing the inks, filling in the spot blacks, doing highlights, you know, like white ink work, like Clark's curl and stuff. <laughs> and then yeah, I'll, oh, and and lettering along the way, because I, I hand letter everything. And then, yeah, I just scan it and put it into Photoshop and color it.